Good afternoon from Moscow, Russia. We're back for the second day of the Girls 20 Summit. My name is Farah Mohammed, and I'm the President and CEO of the Girls 20 Summit. Before I launch into my comments about the theme of our summit, for those in the room, please direct your attention to the screen as we show you a glimpse of our incredible delegates in action over the past few days. Ladies, I hope you enjoy this. My name is Sumaya. I'm the African Union's delegate. My advice to the G20 leaders is to develop a coalition to work along with them during the decision-making process. I'm Maggie Lucy. I'm from Argentina. My piece of advice to the G20 leaders is to take into deep consideration the ideas and thoughts of all young people around the world who finally will be the leaders of tomorrow. Hi, my name is Linda and I'm the delegate from Australia. One piece of advice I have for the G20 leaders is that they need to find more innovative, more effective, more out of the, out of the orthodox solutions to global economic problems. And one of, the, one of the best solutions to that is educating and empowering girls and women. My name is Lara, I'm from Brazil. My advice to the G20 is to empower women because if they empower women, they can change the world. My name is Morgan. I'm from Canada. If I have one piece of advice for G20 leaders, it's are you teaching programming in your schools and are you teaching it to girls? I am Helen and I am the delegate of China. My advice for the G20 is to build more local partnerships and also more multi-stakeholder partnerships between the government, the media and also the civil society. Hi, my name is Mariana Jacinto. I'm from the European Union. One piece of advice that I have for G20 leaders is to open their eyes to the youth of everywhere in the world and to see what they are doing and invest on them. My name is Violette Perrot. I am the delegate for France. One piece of advice I would have for the G20 leaders would be to include women in their decision making. My name is Luca and I'm representing Germany. My piece of advice to the G20 leaders is to only make promises they can actually keep. My name is Ashani and I'm a delegate from India. One piece of advice I have for the G20 leaders is to set up more financial institutions to provide easy funding and training for uh, girls and women to become entrepreneurs and begin their own startups. My name is Putri Agustina, I'm from Indonesia. Uh, my message to the G20 leader is please help the uh, NGO to, to, to support women because women is very important for us. Uh, educate women is educate generation. Ciao, uh, my name is Isabella. I'm the delegate from Italy. An advice I have for G20 leaders is to invest in childhood care, early childhood care, um, in order to support women and families and get more women to work. My advice for the G20 leader of Japan is to involve more girls in science and technology. Um, I think that it's such a great way to get women involved in the workforce, especially with regards to entrepreneurship and getting more girls involved in technology. Um, and in other countries, it seems from talking to the other girls that it's much, a much more respected field for women. And I hope that someday it'll be as well for Japan. My name is Sofia Isadora Padilla Muñoz. And I am the Girls 20 Sumi delegate from Mexico. My advice to the G20 leaders is to support women and girls to start her own business. My name is Alina and I'm from Russia. My piece of advice for G20 leaders will be uh, to listen to young girls' voice. There are many of us around the globe and just ask our opinion. My name is Maru Abdul Qadir. I'm representing Saudi Arabia. My only piece of advice for the G20 leaders is to listen to youth. My name is Nandana Zogtavium Tony. I'm representing South Africa. One piece of advice that I have for the G20 leaders is to help and encourage women to participate in economical and political issues. Hi, my name is Yumin and I'm from Republic of Korea. And my advice to G20 leaders is to provide incentives for those companies to hire a lot of women so that they can promote women leaders to grow more. I am Dinari Jorobekova and in Girls 20 Summit I'm representing Turkey. My advice to G20 leaders is just to make women's education a priority. 
Hi, I'm Ellie Mawson and I'm from the United Kingdom. I think that the G20 leaders should make sure that everyone knows what the G20 Summit is about so that the whole world can start making the steps to improve. My name is Jenny. I'm representing the United States of America. My advice to the G20 leaders is to mandate women participate in leadership positions in the G20 Summit. Well done. Isn't it, isn't it great to see yourselves in action? It is, isn't it? Uh, thank you to WorkBay.net who worked all night to put that together for you guys. Um, it goes without saying, if you looked at my face while I was up here, I feel so proud of the work that you've done uh, and anxious for the work that you're going to be doing. Uh, for those of, uh, of you who are joining us for the first time, either in the room or via live stream, we've been here for about uh, four days. Two of those days were workshops with a variety of partners. Uh, we learned about technology, communications, a whole host of things. And yesterday, we spent the day on a theme that we call Opportunity Gained, where we really looked at where in different industries girls and women can start to make traction if certain changes are made. Um, we um, have kept a very fast pace and we've been able to do this because uh, first of all we're women uh, but second of all because we've put together a great uh, group of partners and I'd like to take a moment and acknowledge those partners at this time. Uh, in particular I'd like to acknowledge Caterpillar, Girl Up and the United Nations Foundation, Google, we're here at uh, Google Moscow and have been for the last couple of days, Norton Rose Fulbright, the Nike Foundation, Novo Foundation, the Gerald Schwartz and Heather Reisman Foundation, Ken Ross, WorkBay.net, Académie Diplomatique, Diplomatique Internationale, the one time I have to use my French, right? Uh, Macro Blue and Mikhailov and Partners. Uh, because of you guys, we're able to provide such an incredible experience. So please join me, delegates, in giving them a round of applause. So yesterday we put the G20 agenda to test. We talked about jobs, we talked about growth, we talked about investment, um, and we did all that using the Google Hangout product. Um, and today we're doing the same, and in fact we're not going to have any in-person uh, guests. We're actually going to go completely digital today and make sure that we can move ourselves around the world hearing uh, from a variety of people on a very difficult topic. As I said, uh, yesterday it was about opportunity gained and today is about opportunity lost. And when we pick the kind of language we do when we say that, it really is uh, about what are you going to miss out on if you don't fix this issue. And this year, uh, and in fact this is, somebody pointed out to me, this is not the first time we're talking about child marriage. Uh, we've talked about this issue before because we truly believe that if the statistics are, as you saw in the film, 14.2 million girls get married every year in a forced early child marriage situation. If you do the math, you know, not only that is that a human rights issue, not only is that a missed opportunity for those girls, it has a serious economic consequence. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about why we started this journey to talk about the eradication of child marriage. I had an opportunity to meet with a wonderful woman called Mabel Van Orange. She used to be the, I see uh, Melissa smiling, um, she used to be the CEO of the Elders. And Mabel had the opportunity working with the Elders. The Elders are a, a group of senior statesmen. We have Nelson Mandela, uh, Desmond Tutu, Gracia Machel, Mary Robinson and a whole bunch of others who got together uh, and decided that it was up to them to pick issues that the world should know about and act on. So uh, Mabel, um, and if you ever meet Mabel, you'll know that she has incredible powers. But this group of elders actually thought that they should take this issue up. And um, after this meeting that I had with Mabel, we were invited, Girls 20 was invited to go to Ethiopia and meet with Desmond Tutu and Mary Robinson and others, Grisha Michelle, with about 50 different organizations. And in Ethiopia, where there are tremendous um, gains being made to eradicate child marriage, we put together this coalition and the coalition became known as Girls Not Brides. Um, what I'm going to do is ask you to, to watch a movie. I could stand up here and, and give you statistic after statistic. 
but I think um, these people can say it much better than I can. So if we could roll the video, uh, that would be great. Thank you. People don't seem to talk much about child brides. Perhaps it is seen as a family issue and not a public one, or a cultural issue and not one of human rights. But I cannot stay silent. This is a grave human rights issue, but it's also a development issue. How can you improve girls' education when they're taken out of school to be married? How can you reduce maternal or child mortality when girls are giving birth at 12 or 13? How can you reduce poverty when child marriage perpetuates poverty? People may say it is tradition, it cannot change, but I know it is not true. Tradition is can change because they are made by people. Great change can happen in a single generation. I know this to be true. I've seen it with my own eyes. Change happens through protecting girls' rights in law and practice, empowering them to take control of their own bodies and destinies and to even become leaders and change-makers themselves. Once you have women liberated, it's amazing how many other problems get resolved. Poverty, education, health. Women are the key in any community. Change happens through raising community awareness of the dangers of child marriage and the benefits of stopping this practice. This is happening on a small scale, but change is far too slow. Just imagine what would happen if we invest more in girls, enabling them to make choices, to earn a living with dignity, to break the cycle of illiteracy, the cycle of ill health, the cycle of poverty that traps them and their communities. Imagine if we connect all those around the world who are working bravely to end child marriage. Imagine the scale of change possible. We can do more than imagine. We can end child marriage now, let girls be girls and not brides. In a few moments, we're going to be joined by Lakshmi, who works at Girls Not Brides. But before we do that, I don't know how you feel, but the first time I saw that film, I was um, mesmerized, especially because of the issue, but also because if you look at the leaders who are now um, galvanizing communities around this issue, it is quite amazing that it has taken this long um, but that you have this sort of critical mass of people now wanting to get behind this issue and really put a, put a stop to it. So while we uh, take the time to transition to our, our next two panelists, I want to hear from the delegates. First uh, show of hands, how many people before the summit, before you actually got involved with the Girls 20 Summit, uh, how, how many of you are aware of the, the prevalence of child marriage? So quite a bit of you. And my second question would be, how many of you think that it exists in your own countries? 
And do you think your government's paid? We, so we, so for the people on the, on the, uh, I'm just going to keep asking questions and our viewers are going to know what's going on. Uh, the majority of the delegates raised their hand for the first question, about uh, five or six for the second question. And I guess for the five or six, how many of you feel that your government feels a responsibility to do something about uh, the issue of eradicating early forced marriages? So no one's raised their hand. And that's why we put this issue on the agenda. Um, you know, many people see this as a cultural issue, as the film pointed out. Some people will see it as a social issue, and some people will see it as an issue they just don't want to talk about it because it's uncomfortable. But the reality is, and I've said this and I sound like a bit of a broken record, if you do take that many uh, girls out of the system, they're not going to go to school, they're going to have poor health outcomes, that's going to affect society. That is a what I call the domino effect that has a severe implication on uh, strong communities, strong countries, and uh, giving a chance for a woman to actually be a contributing member of society in a way that she wishes to do. And that comes down to whether or not that young woman has the ability to make a choice, a choice that all of us want to make. When are we going to get married? How old are we going to be when we get married? And are we going to have children? Part of the challenge, I think, in um, facing this issue is um, it may not seem that it's prevalent in some countries, but in fact it, it is. And I don't make a lot of friends when I say this, but the world is changing. People come in and out of countries, and when people come in and out of countries, they come in and out of countries with their own customs and their own beliefs. And so this is an issue that is not just particular in one part of the world. It may be more prevalent there, but certainly it does exist in other places in the world. Ladies, you guys are never short of opinions. Uh, who's got the mic and, and who can share how they feel about this? <laughs> Go ahead. Um, please well, stand up, though. Oh, okay. And just for our viewers who are maybe joining us for the first time today, please introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Violette, and I represent France. Um, one thing that I thought was really interesting is when one of the member of the elders said that tradition can change because they're made by people, and it's true that it's sometimes very, very often in countries used traditions is used as an excuse to perpetrate child marriage because it's something that is that way and that has been that way forever so we're not going to start changing it now and that's why I think it's really really hard for people who are there for girls who are there to stand up because you literally have to stand up against an entire village an mm -hmm. entire community and an entire history too so I thought that was interesting to point out that you're not like it's not inevitable because traditions are made by people so people can change traditions too. Yes. Um, I'm Linda. I'm representing Australia at the summit. So um, what I found interesting, pretty much following on from Violette's point, is that child marriage, not only is it not just, uh, is, it, is it a tradition that doesn't need to be accepted because it's created, the traditions are created by people, but we also don't need to introduce el an element of cultural relativism. We don't need to say these, el these, cult these traditions are part of particular cultures and have always been so and are immutable and are just key to this particular tradition. No, we don't have to accept that and we don't have to say that um, we're going to accept these because they, these are part of their culture. Because if, if these traditions are wrong and if they hurt girls and women, then they should be eradicated. Absolutely. We're going to actually um, come back to questions because I think we've uh, sorted out our technical difficulties. So if we could have Lakshmi uh, brought on, to on the screen and Dr. Kakenya and we will uh, have them speak to us. You know, this is the interesting things about digital conferences, right? You got to go with the flow. Yeah, and now now I'm getting into my interpretive dance. Can we take more one? We'll take one more question. Hi, I'm or Jenny. Comment. Oh, hi, I'm Jenny from the United States, and I know this is a conference about girls and women, um, but I'm just. My thoughts and questions um, are about the young boys and men who are also affected in child marriage because um, as the term or the terminology suggests, it's not just about uh, girls being forced into marriage but and and little boys um, but entire communities that are um, that face uh, these problems and um, I think that when uh, girls and uh, boys are forced into these situations it's a symptom of a greater problem mm -hmm. and I'm just I'm looking forward to hearing what the leaders and experts on this issue have to say about that because um, as we know with many social um, I uh, social issues uh, there are many uh, problems that cause it and um, 
I would just like to hear also um, an advocate for uh, boys as well. Yeah. You know, that's a, a great comment. In fact, um, one of my advisory board members said to me uh, just before I left, we really have to start getting ourselves uh, more, we, we already do, but we have to get more men and boys engaged in, in this discussion. And you're right, it does affect both. It does affect girls more than, more than boys, but you can't ignore that fact. So um, we are just about to get them on the line. Um, on that issue, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw it out to the delegates. Who think, what is the most effective way, and we have time for one person, what's the most effective way of getting boys and men engaged in this, in, in looking at eradication of child marriage? What do you guys think is the most effective way? Yes. I think a lot has been said about educating youth, which is of course very important, but it's important to recognize as well that these youth are being, um, are learn whatever they, tra traditions that they pursue because of the elders that they look up to. Mm. So two things that, um, that came to mind was it was so inspirational to see this organization with really respected people addressing this issue. And the second is the importance that this brings up of educating the elders within communities as well, local communities on these issues, um, because I feel that that really creates, like you said, a domino effect um, for mm -hmm. the younger people in the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I would agree. I would agree on that. 